Okay, everyone, uh, welcome back to part two of Animar. Uh, this is John here again from the CommandZone.com, and we are going to go over some creatures right now. So there are, I believe, 44 in the deck. Um, I've set these out in piles of, of function functionality, so we'll look at them. Um, the first set are actually not just creatures. There are some artifacts here, but um, these are creatures that help me get Animar out on turn two. Um, so we have um, the set of guides, the, the, the spirit guides, the Simeon spirit guide and the Elvish spirit guide. Um, these are very good, so you can get. You need to get Animar out turn two, like I said earlier. The earlier he comes out, the faster you win. So, um, the more of these kind of spells you have in the deck, the better. Um, so next we have Birds of Paradise. I don't run Lamar Elf. I probably should, but I don't. Um, but you know, maybe I'll do that later. We'll see. I don't know if I need him. Um, next is Wild Cantor. He's a new addition. He's actually very good. He puts a counter on Animar. You can sack him to make a you know make a mana immediately, which is which is very relevant actually. And the other two are Mox Opal. Um, I can get three artifacts out pretty quickly. And then a, uh, a Lotus Petal. So these are the six that I use in order to get Animar out on turn two. And I can usually do it. Alright, so from those, let's go to some more creatures here. Um, and we will start off with... Let's find some, some draw creatures here. Let's start with draw. Okay, so here are my creatures that allow me to draw out the deck. Um, and it's, they're very important. They're a very big part of the deck. So we'll start off with Momervig. Probably the worst, actually, of the creatures, just because his casting cost is a blue and a green. I, I've tried um, as best as possible to limit the amount of creatures with a double, double color in their cost, just because it's less efficiency with Animar. Um, this deck does win with, you know, five land out, so uh, being able to play two creatures instead of one is, is very relevant. So we have Momervig. He helps you, you know, get your guys. Um, a new addition to the deck, but extremely good, is Tomorrow, Azami's Familiar. I have to continuously play creatures, so Tomorrow allows me to kind of find them. It, you know, when you draw a card, instead you look at the top three, and you put two on bottom and one in your hand. So it allows me to continue my, um, uh, my plays over and over again, which is really necessary. Um, the next one is a new one, Primordial Sage. He's actually pretty good. I do play a lot of creatures, so he's another Glimpse of Nature effect, and those are very important, very, very important in the deck. Um, again, with those kind of effects, are, uh, we have Garrick's Pack Leader. He's actually very good as well. There are a lot of creatures in the deck that are uh, 3 power or greater. So he does end up uh, actually drawing me uh, quite a bit of cards during a game. Uh, Mole Drifter, you know, draw 2 for 1, that's pretty good. Um, Kozilek is usually free, so it's draw 4 for free. Um, oh, and then let's get into our ramp. So those are, sorry, that's some of my draw. Here's Consecrated Sphinx. Okay, and now we have ramp, alright. I move my creatures around in a weird spot, but we have ramp now. So you already saw him. Uh, Wood Elves is the first one. Next one is Pilgrim's Eye. He's not very good, Pilgrim's Eye, but he's okay, whatever. He's free. He gets a land into your hand. There's only five basics, so I don't really have too many of these kind of spells, um, just because I, I don't have the mana for it. And then we have Psalm Simulacrum, obviously very good. Um, Sakura Tribe Builder is, you know, very good. You know what he does. Uh, Vorin Klex, Sexy Klexy, as I say. He's very good as also. Um, next is Oracle Modaya, obviously, staple, green, you have to have him. Rafello's another good one. And last but not least, Primeval Titan. He always comes out. He's very, very good. Um, last, and then actually we have, we have more, he's like pseudo ramp, I would say. Um, it's Trick and Mage. He fetches either, you know, the Mana Crypt, uh, the Mox Opal, one of the lands, a Skull Clamp, a uh, Top, right? A uh, Mana Vault, or even a Soul Ring. He, he does a lot. He's got a lot of utility. Um, so I, I consider him ramp. Alright, so those are some of the creatures in the deck. Here we are. Let's go to a couple more here. And we will end up with uh, some untap effects. So here we are. He's the, the Drake. I forgot his name, but he's... I, sh I, should get, I should put the English version in. Sorry, I have the Chinese one in right now, but... Um, he costs 5. He's a 2-3 flyer. When he comes into play, you untap 5 lands. Pretty good for 1 mana, I would say. Um, Cloud of Fairies, we all know, untaps 2. Hopefully it untaps a guy's cradle and something else. And I have uh, Great Whale. So like I said, I took out the Palancron. Um, it was just you know overkill, too much. I didn't want to play with cards like that. So I took it out, and it makes my playgroup a little bit happier. Um, then we get to a couple balance spells I have. Uh, Manowar and Shrieking Drake, both very, very excellent. Uh, if I need to put counters on Animar, I can just you know play them over and over for one blue until I run out of blue, and that can set me up for a next turn where I can you know um, cast something very large. So they're really good. And then I have some clone effects. 
Um, we have Phantasmal Image, uh, Phryxian Metamorph, for, usually for free, so he's awesome. And we have Clone. Um, I would say you want to put as many clone effects and uh, untap effects and bounce effects in this deck as possible. It kind of runs off that. So if there was anything I was going to change about the deck or I would change in the future, it would be putting more of those type effects in the deck because they really allow you to abuse Animar to draw cards and untap all your lands and just do you know everything like incredibly large. So you have to have those. So um, let's get to some other cards, other creature spells we have in the deck. We have Gilded Drake. He's very, very good. Steal a General for one. Um, you know, get a bigger guy for one. He does all kinds of stuff. He's a utility. Um, another one of my favorite is Memnarch. If I can get a lot of mana. He actually got much worse after I took the Palancron out. Um, because I don't have infinite mana anymore. Or I, I usually don't. Um, but he can still be pretty good to steal some artifacts. If I need to. Um, Frixian Revoker. He's an all-star. He costs two. Actually, he usually costs zero. Um, he's a Peeting Needle. Um, he gets. He, he basically says, "Turn to no. You don't get a. You know. You don't get your soul ring anymore. You don't get your mana vault anymore. You don't get something you need to use. You don't get the ability from your general." He does really cool stuff, and he's he's pretty useful. He comes out for zero. If you have to skull clamp him, you know, if that card is no longer on the board, you draw two cards. So he he's a winner either way. Um, he attacks. He blocks. He's good. Artisan of Kozlek. I put stuff in the bin with Skull Clamp, and I can get it right back. Maybe a Shrieking Drake to bounce itself, or bounce the Artisan of like back to my hand, or, or something like that. Bounce a, a clone effect, right? So he actually has a lot of utility bringing stuff back from the bin. Um, I have a Duplicant, just in case I have to get rid of any creatures. This deck does not have much removal. It only has two, which is Duplicant and Indrik Stomp Haller. So not much on the removal side, um, because this deck does not really... Um, doesn't really interact with my opponents. It, it just kind of does its own thing and wins. Um, next we have some fetching cards. We have Fierce Empath. He gets all kinds of good 6 and 7 drops, like Mirror Battle Sphere and, you know, the Artisan or the Primeval Titan. Um, and actually this guy, new surprising hero on the deck, Charmbreaker Devils from Innistrad. He's really good. Um, I only have 5 or 6 instants or sorceries in the deck, and they're all very important, so he gets them back, and they help me win the game that much faster. He's the only red card in the deck besides the Simeon Spirit Guide and the, uh, the Wild Cantor. So red is really not used in this deck. It's not necessary. And if you build it, I, I don't think you should put red in. It's, it's not really uh, too fast. It's kind of, it will slow you down, I should say. Um, another utility is Forgotten Ancient. Um, whenever you cast a spell or your opponents cast a spell, you put a counter on him, and then you move it to Animar during your next top keeper or whenever you want to. So you can make Animar with no counters, and he'll end up having like six or seven counters in one turn. Even if you haven't cast anything, it's pretty good. Obviously, you need E-Witness. Um, Junk Diver is another uh, utility card. It will get back one of my artifacts that's you know died during the course of the game. Uh, we have Treasure Mage, which will fetch a lot of other a lot of cool stuff, which I've kind of already highlighted. Um, Void Mage Husher, which is really cool. You get a lot of utility out of this. He's Flash. He counter he counters an activated ability. Usually, if someone's general. And then when I, ca when I uh, cast another spell, I pop him back to my hand. So he kind of is always relevant, um, and I always get efficiency out of him. He's very good. And lastly, uh, Snapcaster Mage. So I use Snapcaster Mage with the six instants or sorceries. They're all very important. So um, let's take a look at those right now. The instants or sorceries, uh, instants and sorceries, kind of make the deck, and you really need them. Um, so we'll look at them. So we're going to start off with Time Warp. Time Warp, you need it to win. If you have Time Warp... You know, you can usually uh, poop out your deck, take another turn, and kill everyone. Very, very necessary. This is a creature-based deck, so Worldly Tutor, obviously, very good. Uh, next is Mystical Tutor. Um, that fetches two spells, always. It fetches, one, the Temporal Fissure, which allows me to win the game. Um, so I can usually, once the deck starts to you know, get rolling and it, like the snowball, event, the snowball effect starts happening... I can kind of get out maybe 20 or 30 or 40 spells in one turn. And if my opponents haven't scooped yet, then I'll just Temporal Fisher everybody's boards back to their hand. They start from square one, and, you know, they just scoop. So that's pretty good. Um, the other uh, fetch from the tutor is Glimpse of Nature, and I really need Glimpse of Nature. That's an integral part of the deck. You have to be able to draw. Um, so Glimpse of Nature is in there. Next, probably the third best uh, instant in sorcery is Snap. Snap allows me to bring back a creature to my hand, untap some lands, play the creature for free, maybe untap again, who knows. Uh, it's a very good card. Um, next is Brainstorm. 
just because I have to get deeper in the deck, right? We got to see those three cards. So Brainstorm helps me um, dig to my win conditions and such. And last, we have a uh, Force of Will. It's the only um, it's the only counter in the deck, but you kind of need one, you know. Um, every blue deck has to have at least one counter, and it helps. It allows me to continue my combo. Um, so anyway, that's Animar. You've seen the whole deck. Um, he's really good. If you want to build him, I highly suggest you do it. He's very cool. Uh, he's absurdly powerful. And people will take him lightly until you play some spells. And they say, holy shit, you know, this guy is just going to draw his whole deck. And, and you can do it. Um, you, I, I would say you have to be a, a good player because you have to know how to tap your mana. Um, and if you're bad at that, this is a very good deck to start practicing at because you really have to kind of anticipate what you're going to draw, what you need to draw, and... and it's, it's very good for that. It's, it's one of those decks where you really have to think through your turn. Um, people get sometimes upset because I could take a 15-minute turn where I'm thinking of what I need, what, you know, what are my outs, um, how much mana do I have open, how do I get more mana and such. And so uh, Animar is a very good deck for those people who want to um, practice their play skill. Um, so anyway, this is the deck. It's very, very good. I highly suggest you build it if you have the cards. Um, there are some changes I would eventually make to it. I'd probably put more copy effects, maybe one or two more bounce spells, um, and if, you know, whatever. When I get to the finals this this uh, this season, I'll probably put Palancron and Tidespound Tyrant back in, just because, you know, you gotta go in fee. Anyway, uh, so once again, this is John from thecommandzone.com. Um, look for more uh, deck techs we're going to be doing soon. I'm going to have some Innistrad drafts put online as well, so um, get ready for that, and uh, we should have fun. Alright, see you guys next time.